Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to talk about how you customise loot filters. So what are they? They are the nice things in Path of Exile that turn this pile of junk into something far more usable. Such as this. Why sort through these manually when you can have the machine do it based on the rules that you give it? And I'm going to show you how to do this in Filter Blade. I hope you find it useful and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so over in Filter Blade now, if we go over to the bar, we can see it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.filterblade.xyz. And let's jump right in. So this league is the first time I've been playing with loot filters and custom loot filters. In order to maximize my mapping efficiency, I've been increasing the strength of my loot filter to very strict. Previously, I would only ever go up to semi strict. Went to strict, that was okay, went to very strict, and mapping definitely increased in speed. The problem is that I like to craft stuff, and it hides some of the currency, and it also hides some of the oils, and I'd rather pick those up so I can level them up. So what I do is, I select the filter that I want to go to ultimately, but is a bit too strict. Styles allow you to customise the um, loot filters. These are temporarily offline because of work that um, Neversync's doing. Neversync stable, very strict. Now he's also got some presets, so if you're rolling an archer, it will help look for bows and things, so you can switch these on if you want to. I'm going to not do that. If you mess up or want to start again, you can reset filter here and it will reset the whole filter. Now if you scroll down here, it gives you a brief overview of what that filter gives you. So you can see transmutes are off the table and we want those. Scroll of wisdoms being off the table really annoyed me at first, but just sell a transmute and get eight of them. It's absolutely fine. And for portals, I now use a portal gem instead of portal scrolls. Okay, so how do we customise it? Go to customise and you can see the loot filter is now broken down into these sections. So general is vendor recipes, currency, chanting bases, and all this good stuff. Vendor recipes, if you want the chromatic orb, you can switch it on here. Now it's sometimes worth, if it's only a 1x4, some swords, you can fit a lot of those in your inventory, so you could switch this one on if you still want it. Also, for each of these categories, if you mess something up, you can reset it. Okay, currency, this is what we want to customise. First things first, blight oils. Um, you can see oil for tier 4 is switched off. We're going to show all of those. Now we could add another rule here as well just by clicking add rule. So we could create a tier 5 and have a lower colour or something much smaller. Say if we wanted the clear oil not to really show up, we could add another rule. Drag this down here and then we can change this to look really dull so we don't pick it up. Um, what could make this look dull? So we could do something like that to look, make it look greyed out compared to the others. I'm not going to do that though so we'll delete that but first let's drag that back up. And then we just remove this rule. Okay, so all oils will now drop for me. So you can see one change has been made there. Okay, general currency is where we want to go next. Exalted orb, we definitely want that on. Okay, so here we can set the sound volumes and things. So in here, if you want to change the sound of an item, you can still do that even though that Starling's off. So if we click sound, at the moment it's playing default sound six. So what does that sound like? How do we detect that? Click this little slider here and it'll give you the sound of an exalted orb in my game. And you can change the volume of this. Obviously it's an exalt, we want it high. Now if you want to customise the sound to make it sound like someone else, we can go to community sound and we can say, I don't know, let's do mathel. Don't ask me for a price check. <laughs> That's good, right? It is indeed. <laughs> not particularly fond of any of those. You can also do custom and then upload your own file. So you could have me saying, I don't know, exalted. So normal six, absolutely fine. Okay, so what currency is off? Alchemy shards are off. Alteration shards are off. Transmute shards are off. Now you can switch any of these back on. So if you want portal scrolls on for whatever reason, I do strongly suggest you switch these off. There are vendor recipes to get these back in, um, Act 4 and Act 9, I think, have vendors that can trade Scrolls of Wisdom for Portal Scrolls. And to use those, all we need to do is use Transmute to get those. So let's switch Transmutes back on. You can see Orbs of Transmutation are on while levelling in areas below 67, but we want that all the time. So General Currency, and actually it's here. We definitely want Orbs of Augmentation as well. So this basic Tier 1, we're just going to switch it on. Now Alchemy Shards, Orb of Augmentation, and Orb of Transmute will be on. Now, I'm not too fussed, actually, on the shards. The alchemy shards I do want. Engineering shards don't want. Don't particularly care for binding shards either. And I want regal shards. And I also want armor as scraps. So I'm going to move that up there. Everything else we can leave off. Okay, so we made five changes to currency. 
And we can also sort these based on current market prices. If you want to, you could do this maybe once a week just to see if the price goes up or down on an item. Now there's also some currency rules while you're leveling. I'm going to leave these alone because I don't have any particular um, preference on these. Now higher stack sizes do two things. They allow you to drop something if it's a higher stack size than one. You could say I'm only going to pick up transmute shards if there's at least eight of them. And you got this here with chaos shards. You will pick them up if there's at least four. But also you can change its colour and armour scraps if there's at least four we're going to pick them up. we are actually switched on to pick up any of them so these are absolutely fine. I'm not going to play around with these very much at all. Resonators, these are all on. And some of this is just to check to see if it's to your liking. Pandera's coin, these really annoy me. So what I'm actually going to do is hide anything that's below 100 shards. Actually no, let's go 80. So anything below 80 shards we're not going to even see. So we're only going to pick up the big stacks. This might mean you're missing out on stuff. Picking up Paranda's coin is really, really inefficient if they're in tiny stacks. Rogue markers, these ones as well. I'm going to hide if there's one, and I'm only going to pick up if there's over 80 again. And these don't actually drop with a sound. If you want a sound on them, remember to switch these on. Incubators, is any switched off? Yeah, okay, so some of these incubators are switched off, like the Skitterbot incubators off. If you want to switch it on, click it. Divination cards. I want all divination cards, really. So I'm just going to show all these. Now you can set this to not show maps below a certain level. I'm going to keep this up because I do want all maps to show. And you can basically customise the colours to make them look more powerful or make them stand out. Leveling, colours and links. If you're going to make a character and you want specific links, go into this three section here. Now it doesn't give you the option to add any, but what you can do is if you want blue, blue, blue or blue, blue, green, for instance, you can type into this box here blue 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 or blue blue green and now those items will show and say we only want this for I don't know uh, axes one-handed axe and we want to make this stand out so we're going to set the background color to something that stands out let's do the text color as white and then we can put a border on here let's do a nice strong yellow okay so now anything that drops with this between levels 1 and 24 we could set this up to rare if we wanted, so only rare items will then drop. And you can also set this level, so we're only going to drop in levels up to 28. You can also do range, so you can say drop between, I don't know, 12 and 29, for instance. Now I'm not going to do that because I'm not leveling a character at the moment that I haven't got leveling gear for. This is really for the start of a new league. Now these mod filters can be quite useful as well. If you know what the mod is of your weapon, you can type them in here and it will actually, when you hover over them, tell you what they are. So this is a local increased physical damage. So you can see physical weapons are highlighted here while you're leveling to make sure we drop those items and highlight them. And this one's cold damage. So there's all kinds of different things. And to work out what these are, you can go and look them up on something like um, Po Ninja. Quality gems. Okay. So at the moment, these only drop quality if they're above 23. Okay, so this is over quality only. And if we want to do the normal, we look under um, vendor recipes. So let's go right back up to the top. Vendor recipes. Gem cutters, prisms, it'll be under. Okay, so it's disabling one or above. What we're actually going to do is just drop this quality to five on this one. If it's above level five, I want to pick it up. And we're going to show it. Previously, it was only showing 19 and above, which is a bit excessive. You get a lot of these from the new League Mechanic and Ultimatum. And you really do want to combine these. If you don't know what the vendor recipe is, you add up the total quality of all the gems. And if it's 40, you'll get a gem cutter's prism per 40. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. Something else to cover is these little icons here. What do they do? So if you click on this, this is this little icon here. You can change the size from big, medium or small, which seems to have no effect. This could just be a graphical display book. We might actually see it fine in game. You can change its color if you want. I'm going to keep it red so it stands out. And you can change the icon that it's going to show next to it. I'm going to reset that because I don't want to change it. And then this other thing here is a light beam. So you can send a light beam down on the item, which for exalted orbs we want to do. And you can set the color of it here. You can also set temporary, which means it will only happen while the sound is playing for the drop, so it's only very brief. Don't really want that. If I drop an exalt, I want a light beam down to show me exactly where it is. And there's a little info button here as well, and if you click that, it shows you what each of the colours are. So that's those two buttons there. Now, if you want to go and test it, you can go and simulate. So if you want to test currency, go to currency, generate valuable loot. And actually, let's play sound. There's the exalted sound. And then we can go to save and load, and I'm going to save this to Altec 2K very strict. 
yes, overwrite because it's better than my current one. And then to get it onto your character, there's two ways of doing it. We can either sync with Poe, which I'm going to do because I actually signed in through Path of Exile. Overwrite. PC, apply. My new loot filter will be there, and we can go and test that in a second. But if you don't trust logging in to third-party sites using your Path of Exile login, then you can download the file manually, and then copy it to the correct Path of Exile folder on your machine, and then just go and set it. Switching back over to Path of Exile now, if we go over to UI, and we're just going to refresh Altec 2K very strict. And you can see last updated 11th of May 2021, which is my current system clock date. And we can see loaded successfully. It will always load successfully if you've done it from Filter Blade. However, if you are doing it by manually entering the files, which I haven't shown you in this video, then you can get failures that you'll need to correct before it'll load correctly. Now, if anyone does want to see how to manually enter the filter files, I'm happy to go through that. And if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please remember to leave a like. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.